Hello there, I'm Chris Dash. I'm Mike White. And this is Father Malone. And we are the hosts of Dreams for Sale, a once a month look at the Twilight Zone 1985, otherwise known as the best reboot of this show. But Question mark. I, yeah, I was about to say, we may be getting into some territory that's not that. I'm now anymore. starting to appreciate the Jordan Peele reboot. <laughs> oh, okay. That's a lie. <laughs> There's no way that that's possible, right? Um, I don't know. After this run, starting to think it. I mean, that's fair. Yeah. Well, not what, overall. I mean, sure. Well, yeah. Well, you know, topicality does hurt the show overall. I think that was kind of. I think that's the general consensus among everyone is Trump episodes are cool, but like ten years from now, I hope to God nobody cares. So right. Uh, on this episode, though, we're not talking about Jordan Peele's Twilight Zone. We're talking about the tenth and eleventh episodes of the third season of the Twilight Zone, nineteen eighty-five. Those episodes are the trance and acts. Of terror. Lights, a crowd, the proper atmosphere, and the common coin of desperate belief. Commodities necessary to the life and times of Leonard Randall, who may or may not be someone else as well. So the trance aired November 26, 1988. It is directed by Randy Bradshaw, written once again by Father Malone's favorite, J. Michael Straczynski, everyone. I love him. He's so good on this show. Uh, Yeah, and this episode talks all about a man named Leonard, who may or may not be able to challenge or challenge channel Delos, uh, a creature from beyond the stars or the company in Westworld. You take your pick. Well, now it is, I suppose. Um, (laughs) That's all I could think of. (laughs) Yeah, I think it was in the original, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely was. Um, The sort of mid to late 80s seemed to me to be the rise of, and I think we've talked about this in other episodes, the sort of new ageism sort of like permeating the culture Uh where uh, suddenly um, uh, Shirley Shirley MacLaine is talking about her past lives and crystals are a thing and we're cleansing our chakras and whatever. Um, And so obviously this episode is a, a, a clear not attack on it, but comment on it and kind of a Twilight Zone twist where the guy is faking it and then the, the biter gets bit. He he has the real deal show up. I think uh, this, like most of the episodes we're going to be talking about today are sort of gentle Twilight Zone episodes. There doesn't seem to be any stakes whatsoever. Um, I, I didn't, I, 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 there's nothing inherently wrong with this one. And I really like Peter Scolari. Um, it's always good to see him. What's funny is, but you know, back in the bosom buddy days, I was sure he was going to be the star and Tom <laughs> yep. Hanks was always just going to be like a second banana goofball. How wrong I was. That's um, the second uh, banana goofball now, Father Malone. That's yeah. right. <laughs> um, but uh, I mean, this one, this one's okay. I, you know, I can't really speak against it, but um, it, it didn't feel like it went anywhere. did anything. It's not like we learned anything about this guy and, and why he does what he does and, you know, what the consequences are now that he has a real spirit within. Um, and it, 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 it's, it doesn't really take a savage attack on it and it doesn't take a measured. I don't know. It's just kind of there. Just right. What's well, like, he doesn't as this new spirit, the real spirit, let's say he doesn't come out and give people really good advice. Doesn't, look into their future doesn't call out all of their foibles and flaws he's he's neither devil nor angel he just yeah kind of spouts a lot of new age claptrap and i'm like okay i don't know if i care about this real spirit as much as i did about delos of atlantis it just oh, came new, from thousands new... of years ago to tell me to quit smoking like right. everyone is telling me to quit smoking <laughs> I mean, as far as I'm concerned, the fact that the spirit is just a snide dick is all it is. Like, the spirit only talks when, like, someone's walking away. He's like, burr, 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 burr. like, what did you say? <laughs> right. Oh, what, oh, no, what oh was nothing. That? What was that? <laughs> oh, nothing. You, like, you want to start something? Yeah. yeah. I didn't it's say anything. Like, you know, like you were talking about Father Malone. Like, this is, I don't know if this is a condemnation of people like Sylvia Brown, these, like, ch- mediums or channels or, like, Om Seti, stuff like that. But... It kind of feels like it, and I bet if you were one of those people, you would find it an attack. But again, uh, if you don't believe that those people are honest to begin with, what does it matter? So if you know you don't believe it, this is giving them a hard time. They kind of deserve it if you don't think they're being honest anyways. It's just, I don't feel like it goes far enough. Uh-uh. 
No, it should I mean, it, it should have gone a little farther. Like and in the first season, we had an episode called Healer with Eric Bogosian, which is sort of the exact same kind of plot, like you know where he misuses it and it and he loses the power and it goes on to somebody else. Like that at least had a beginning, a middle, and an end to it and had some stakes to it. This is just. Like what? He like lost his endorsement deal and, you know, who cares? Like what penance is he doing for scamming these people who are? Well, I don't what I don't understand is he's not really being punished because he is going to learn the wisdom of the universe. So, like, that's not a bad thing in a lot of ways. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, he, you know, it should only take 20 or 30 years, which would put him in like his 40s or I guess his 50s or 60s. But like, again, then he will be able to speak to the wisdom of the universe. So, like, is this a bad thing? Yeah, it sounds like he's been actually chosen to do some good in the world. Right, right. Maybe we're missing the point. <laughs> I don't think there is one. I think these are just very, like you said, very low stakes, soft episodes of the show. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm sure we'll talk about it more in the next one, because the next one I'm actually angry at. <laughs> yeah. This one's and not bad. I- I was reading um, the blog postcards from the Twilight Zone, which is a pretty good blog. Talks a lot about old episodes, including these eighties episodes, and they're talking a lot about how Straczynski was just recycling old Twilight Zone ideas and just kind of calling them his own. Like it's there is a created by Rod Sterling credit on here, but I don't think the original authors were credited. I don't know. The one thing I found the most hilarious is that I think he goes onto a TV show and it insults the host and the woman that's um, who show he's on, I believe uh, her character name is Daphne Blake. So I was very happy that uh, Daphne, you know, cause Daphne ends up getting a TV series and Fred's her cameraman. I can't remember if that's just in the comic books or if that's in the, if that's canon to, um, uh, to the actual show of Scooby-Doo. Is anything actually canon? Yeah, I guess it all kinds of flip flops, you know, yeah, once I mean, a pup named Scooby Doo came in. Right. Once we, whatever show you're watching, that's what it is. Yes, I'd love, exactly. Fred loves traps. That's all I know. He does love his traps. Uh, of he course. Fan of traps. I wanted more from this episode. I like the Shuma Zamoria. Like, I like that sort of like wacky nonsense because, again, yeah. as someone who's into this stuff, like, I love how just bullshit this gets. It reminded me of. Those like Indiana Jones and the fate of Atlantis comics, books slash video games. Like I love that Atlantean stuff, but they don't really go into it enough. And it doesn't fall flat. It's just not much of anything. And that Eric Bogosian episode is way better, way better. Yeah. It has given time. It just has no teeth at all. Like, you know, if, if this, if someone from the first season had written this episode, it would have been bitter and angry and we Uh could have gotten mind something from it as it is. It's just like, Here's another gentle tale of a little bit of paranormal. And here's the Twilight Zone, everybody. It's ironic to me that J. Michael Straczynski is the executive of Harlan Ellison's estate. Because mm. if Harlan Ellison wrote this episode, it would have oh had my God. Team. Oh, yeah. Anyone. I mean, yeah. yeah. George R.R. Martin, if he had written this episode, even. <laughs> yeah. That spirit that takes over Scolari would be such an asshole and yeah. just completely tear everyone a new one. Yeah, instead of just being like, sure, 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 sure. like, stop mm-hmm. talking under your breath, spirit. Like, yeah. well, and the whole thing, too, I mean, just the pacing of it, where it's just like, when he goes under in those trances and he wakes up, he's just like, he doesn't know anything happened that he even went under in a trance. And it's like, you were recorded, you know, there is a videotape of you doing this. So why don't we show you the videotape and figure it out a lot faster and then do, you know, it's like that whole figuring out of the power thing. I think we talked about this either last month or the month before, but it's just like, come on, you know, get to know it very quickly and then off you go. And we'll talk about that. I think what in the next episode, the 2020 vision doesn't take you a long time to figure out what's going on with stuff. Yeah. And we're as the viewers, we've already figured it out. You don't why why are we smarter than the lead? Like right. don't do that. And again, exactly. now we're backed into a corner with the show's episodes only being twenty two minutes. So if you're not if if you're not gonna just get to the point immediately, you are wasting our time and your time. Uh-huh. Because you have twenty two minutes and that is a choice of the people who made the show, and you need to play inside of that box substantively. And I think I don't think this does. Yeah, I mean, not to not to bring up the the other podcast we've done or did, the Chronicles from the Crypt, 
about the Tales from the Crypt show. The, the last couple of seasons for that show, we felt were just like the ideas that had been left over, that it was like somebody pitches something. It sounds enough like a Tales from the Crypt story. They go, go ahead and write it. And then there's that's where it ends as far as the creative process. They just go, OK, we'll film this as is now, as opposed to rigorously going through it and making it better. It feels like the, the first draft is the shooting draft here on every episode this season. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's I just don't understand why more care wasn't given to some of this stuff because they really needed to pare the writing down, focus it a little bit more, maybe have something to say. This is Twilight Zone. Like, yeah, I mean, it's not enough to touch on a subject that's current. Like, no, take a stand some way. I mean, even though we didn't like Kentucky Rye or Little Boy Lost, at least they had something to say. Yeah, I didn't think anything could make me appreciate those. But, you know, as muddle headed as they were, like. Hey, man, they fucking went for it. Like, here's my point of view. Deal with it. Yeah. Tongue clucking and all. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, hey, that Kentucky Rye episode is hardcore anti anti alcohol. But like, again, I I can't fault it for having that opinion. I can fault this episode for literally not giving a shit enough either way to say anything. So and and yet, uh, like, you know, again, it it wasn't like offensive. It just kind of happened, washed over you and was done. So let's go on to the next episode, Acts of Terror. Considered quite pretty once, not long ago, before the arguments and the years and the stick took it out of her. Louise Simonson, like so many broken on the wheel, with one subtle difference, this wheel has a name. So Acts of Terror aired December 3rd, 1988. It is directed by Brad Turner and written once again by J. Michael Straczynski. Boy, he's (laughs) just he's just everywhere. And, and, Very and, busy nowhere, man. and nowhere at the same time. And was he not the story editor of the show at this point? So was, basically was he, he's just, he was. He's just rubber stamping his own work. <laughs> Here yeah. you go. Send it through. This one's a this one's a keeper. Mm-hmm. And so in this episode, we have a woman played by Melanie Mayron who is married to Kenneth Welsh, who is a abusive husband. And many, many, many crazy things happen, like a dog figurine. How do we know we're in Canada? Oh, look, Kenneth Welsh. Kenneth Welsh. Yeah. And the way <laughs> Melanie Mayron said sorry over and over sorry. and over again. <laughs> yeah. Kenneth Welsh is one of the great Canadian actors. And very few times does he cross that border. But uh, yeah, he always makes an impression. Of course, for me, he's always going to be Wyndham Earl from Twin yep. Peaks. Of course. Oh, yeah. He's Black fantastic Welsh. in this episode. Yeah, the acting yes. is, is good. I, and yeah. I like Melanie Marin a lot. Like, uh, she didn't really uh, uh, break much out of that 30 something uh, ghetto that she was in. But mm-hmm. um, I think she's good here. And, yeah. you know, kudos for attempting to have a bit of social rev- relevance here. But, like, here's, here's a question Is it um, is it established that her sister sent her that dog? Is that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. And did and did they not address it again? Right? They they never say like I got it from ye old curiosity shop. Or, no, she's uh, like I got this mail from my sister. Right. Okay. Right. I sure would like to open that mail. It's a gift from my sister. Ah, uh, yeah. Why are you getting any letters? <laughs> oh my it's god. It's twelve oh six. Where's that food? dinner? Yeah. You burned my eggs, bitch! Like Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean. I don't know. I don't want to step into a minefield here, but like you look at his character, you just think like, what, what was the attraction ever? Right. This <laughs> no, older I, guy who, you know, I don't want to, you know, I'm not trying to blame, blame with victims of abuse, like that it's their fault for making the wrong choice. I'm not saying that at all, but like, you just look at this character. He's so painted in the evil with the evil brush. Oh, that you're God, just yeah. like, what, what's going unkempt, on here? unkempt hair unkempt clothes sharpening his knife in his garage like this guy is a scumbag this guy's a scumbag and, he's and they didn't even on her it's he like, didn't even open his mouth ma- if he didn't open his mouth i would still know he was a scumbag like, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. that's how he's evil he's painted with there's yeah. no subtlety here uh-uh. uh and i don't know i mean it's it's a twilight zone i guess because the statue comes to life i guess kind of it's this i i don't know it's very ham handed and it's very poorly uh, sort of delineated what is going on here. I mean, mm-hmm. we know because it's happening and we're seeing it. But uh, and, uh, you know, 
the thing is, like, the dog just keeps kind of menacing him without actually doing anything for right. most of the episode. Like, wouldn't it immediately attack him? He's been beating on this woman for years. She's yeah. she's a, she's a broken human. And this thing is like the avatar of her rage. And it just kind of growls at him a little bit. Like, like the scene where he's in, where he's in sharpening his knives in the uh uh, in the garage, and he has time to not only reach over and get his hastily bolted to the wall shotgun, but then fumble out the 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 shotgun shells and put it in. Like I'm just like, why aren't you ripping his throat out? What? Well, what, what are I you waiting for? What I don't understand is why was it just a dog? Why wasn't it like the Shadow Man or like a monster or something? Right? Like, yeah. It's the Twilight Zone, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Why be go for it? Why be bound by terrestrial creatures that actually exist? This is the Twilight Zone. We mm-hmm. have seen the Shadow Man already, who is a you know, if you have sleep paralysis, a real thing. If you don't, not a real thing. But th- this is a dog, a Doberman Pincher. Like Jesus Christ, you could have done anything, literally anything, and it's just a dog. Yeah. Well, okay. d- during the eighties, Dobermans were very fearsome. <laughs> just that's during the true. 80s. just during the 80s and then it became yeah. rottweilers for a while and then yes. it became pit bulls pit bulls yeah and it, pit bulls still reign to this day but yeah uh, yeah, true. yeah yeah back in the 80s pit bulls were just like selling beer <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. that's true is it is uh, okay was i the only one who thought that when he was like out sharpening his knives he was like a serial <laughs> killer and it wasn't he was cheating on his wife i was like is he like a serial killer and that's what's going on here oh, oh what were you doing more work than the writers Right. I was making this episode yeah. interesting. <laughs> right. Yeah. I was trying to make this episode interesting, which it wasn't. Yeah. That's my fault. You, and guess. you just did. That, that is miles more interesting than what we got. That's what right. I thought was going on. He's like out there sharpening his knives, and his friend's like, You gotta stop doing this, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's like, Well, you know, I have to murder my wife eventually, but not right now. Like, I'm working up the, to it. Yeah, like yeah. then the dog, like, yeah, but no. Like, it's just, he's cheating on, if he's, okay, I have a question. <laughs> Why is he sharpening his knives? What does that have to do with anything? Because he's a bad, bad man. <laughs> bad people sharpen their knives. Uh-huh. Bad men sharpen knives. That's just, that's just science. Put that's that right. shit on a t-shirt right there. Bad men sharpen knives. I guess, I guess, because he, he didn't go on a hunting trip. He went on a fishing trip. And again, <laughs> well, he's got to gut that fish with his, but you don't gut the fish with that kind of knife with a giant Bowie knife. <laughs> right. <laughs> you, you gut a fish with a fillet knife that has a blade. That's like that big <laughs> this giganto knife. That's why I was like, he's a serial yeah, what, killer. I don't get it. Something tells me then that the production designer was not as on the ball as they should have been. Oh, weird. Episode. You know what he should have been out in his garage doing that would have made perfect sense. And it would have led into all of this. Should have been out there like wrapping flies or something. Hmm. You know, like fly fishing, like out there with that, his like little evil. thing. That's, that's delicate not, yeah. and nuanced. But it doesn't right. matter what he's doing as long as he's talking about the fact that he's cheating on his cheating, wife. Yeah, like loud and proud in the fucking next. Oh room. my god! Yes, yeah, so loud. Lord. Yeah, I <laughs> fuck someone else. Can't you not hear me? Like, want to smell my fingers? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I got to make sure this door is open. Yeah. Right. And then it and then it does the the l- l- laziest of lazy tropes where she's like standing in the doorway where everyone could he- see her and she's like Ugh, like that's man yeah I mean and and you know what and in the end does the guy really get anything done to him I mean it gives her the gumption to leave but like what is his punishment here just a dog attack yeah just a dog attack like he's wearing a bandage over one hand but i'm like man you should be mauled to shit it's yeah. the implication of a dog attack at the end she's like don't right. come after me or the oh. dog will get you like okay who cares <laughs> like are we also led to believe that the dog will protect her in her sleep and at all times because this guy seems like a complete looney tune and would yeah. track her down like oh yeah i mean you know they could have just done anything like i wish it she had been the the, the catalyst for this somehow like you know like she found the the thing and it, it appealed to her in a shop you know like it's it, the character doesn't do anything at all until the last moment when she leaves which is what she should have done to begin with but like you know there's no proactive motion on her part like i would have loved at the end had like that dog come and joined her like like yes i've been doing this the whole time you fucker like don't ever touch me again something 
Or in, or the other way, like had this guy like be completely ostracized as a lunatic for seeing a, a phantom dog everywhere right. he goes. Yeah, get locked up in the loony bin. Right. Some punishment like her leaving was going to happen eventually anyway. And why does the dog still stick around after the sculpture has been broken? Yeah. Well, you know who that dog is, Chris? Jesus. Tom Skerritt. Oh, wow. Deep cut. I like it. Yep. He's Thank here. You. He's back. He's Tom, all the way from Kolshak. All the way. 10, 15 years later, he comes back still trapped in dog form and has to help that was out the this lady. Too, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. it was. He heard the calls of Melanie Mayron. And he was like, oh, yeah. I'm coming, Melanie. I'm coming to save you. Yeah, that's how he's paying back the, he's the curse. Atoning, certainly. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then and then what we don't see is the scene after this episode ends with her driving off and he turns into Tom Scarrett. Right. Which is good for her. That's a good, good look for everybody. Guy. Yeah, Tom, yeah. Sc- Tom Scarrett's great. Oh, hell yeah. We and just made Tom- a better episode. Yeah. Take that, Straczynski. <laughs> 35 years ago. Let us go. Let, let Father Malone manage Harlot Ellison's estate. You coward. I, I should. Yeah, that's that, that's what you get for not ever responding to my interview requests there, J. Michael. <laughs> really? Well, he's too busy? Too busy. I got He had that new book out, and I was like, come on, let's do an interview. No, too busy. Too busy. I mean, he's too busy writing those Thor movies that they had to then unwrite. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they essentially unwrote the first Thor movie in Thor 3. So, mm-hmm. cool. Who cares? <laughs> I didn't. I, I didn't realize he wrote the Thor movie. He wrote the first one, yeah. Really? Uh-huh. Yeah, he was also one, in the first Thor movie. That one's bad. Yeah, that's why they yeah. wrote it. <laughs> Not as bad as the second one, but it's still pretty bad. Well, the second one is expounding on what the first one did. So yeah, yeah. yeah. You thought that <laughs> was bad? Here, yeah. Yeah. here. Let's amplify that for you. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, J. Michael Straczynski is a fantastic comic book writer. Like certainly, his runs yeah. on Spider-Man and Thor and Fantastic Four are amazing. He also wrote Superman Earth One, which I would suggest anyone who is a fan of Superman and has never read that, go check out. And I like Babylon 5. I thought that was a solid show for a couple uh-huh. of years that I watched it. But this? No. Well, you know what? Young writer working his way up, I guess. Yeah. Everybody's got, got to start somewhere. And I'm sure he's written episodes of the show that I can't think of right now that were good. Has he? I think Possibly. every episode that we've talked about has not been good. Oh, he wrote like 12 him. episodes of the show. so All in this season. Uh-huh. Yeah, feels like it at least. Anything else we want to say about this episode? Don't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Father Malone is like an angry gr- green haired FDR with those glasses on. <laughs> 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 Don't watch it. Also, December 7th, 1941. <laughs> Infamy, my friend. Yes. Don't ask what your Twilight Zone can do for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fair. J. Mm-hmm. Michael Straczynski. So on the next episode of Dreams for Sale, we're going to be taking a look at the 12th and 13th episodes of the third season, 2020 Vision, and There Was an Old Woman. And guess what, guys? Neither one is written by J. Michael Straczynski. Oh, oh they must be good then, right? Mm. Yeah, we'll find out on the next episode now, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> or more aptly, you'll find out on the next episode because we already know. <sighs> Oh, we got God. one up we, on you, folks. I let the, we let the sauce. We let how the sausage is made out <laughs> out into the world. Yeah, you guys already watched him. <laughs> yes. So I just looked him up. He did write one episode in the second season. It was that horrible imaginary friend one with Tom Scarrett. Oh, oh funny! No. What are friends so for? So funny! Bum, bum, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, that episode is really bad. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Wow. Not the one with Lucas Haas as well? Yeah. 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 And uh, was that Fred Savage too? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Lucas Haas is the imaginary friend and Tom, and Fred Savage is the real one, right? Yeah. Fred, well, Fred Savage is just a dickhead in it, right? Isn't yeah. Son? Like he's just a rude kid, like punching out girls and shit. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, boy. But until we talk about the next episode of the show, where can people find you, Father Malone? You can check me out over at fathermalone.com. You can check out my podcast. It is a half hour radio drama uh, called Dark Destinations. Uh, You can also check out my YouTube channel, um, which uh, you can also access through fathermalone.com. What about you, Mike? What's going on at the Projection Book Podcast? 
Uh, we are talking about movies. What movies? I can't tell you, but we're definitely talking about them. Got in some depth. good stuff lined up. <laughs> yep. Definitely in depth. So got an amazing complaint today. We we're talking about animal violence on one of the uh, movies that we were discussing and had to make uh, write and complain about how silly we were talking about animal violence when there is real violence in Tarantino films. And I was like, well, that's not actual real violence. They have stuntmen, whereas this movie had possible chicken death. So just want to warn people. People complain about the weirdest things. What yeah. about ism, my dudes? It's I guess so. Ages. It's fantastic. It's so, ages yeah. sweeping the nation. It's a great time to be alive. Yeah. Find me over at projection-booth.com and yeah, come on along. It's a fun time. And as for me, you can find me at cstashu.com where you find links to all the podcasts I work on, like Barty Miller with Mike. Father Malone and I, we still have Chronicles from the Crypt. You can still listen to it. It is a complete show from start to finish. You could listen to that or the Culture Cast, my main show, where we talk about movies. Chris, I'd like to suggest that you spell your name. Yeah. For people, instead of yeah, just saying cstashu.com. Yeah. That's Nobody knows point. how to spell Stashu. You might want to change your name. Not even me, to be fair. C S Stashu. <laughs> no, it's a C S T A C H I W dot com. You guys are right. I should spell it out. I'm an idiot. Thank you. We already knew that. Uh, yeah. And uh, as for this show, TwilightZone85.com, TwilightZone85 on Twitter as well. Big thanks as always to Roxy Drive and Neutron Dreams for the music for the show. And we'll catch you on the next episode. Mm-hmm.